Hello and welcome to Yoga with Nazareth. In case you haven't figured it out, I am Nazareth and I'm excited to talk to you about something that isn't easy to summarize in a YouTube video. I had a procedure called a vestibulectomy back in 2016 and I've shared really openly on my channel about my struggles with vulvodynia and pelvic floor dysfunction, yet I never got around to talking about this topic. Truth be told, I've recorded maybe three different videos and I've been really unhappy with each one because as I mentioned, it's just so hard to get all of the information in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm gonna do my best today and I'm gonna focus on the topics that I think are most relevant. Why was I a good candidate and why did I choose to have the procedure? What was it like? And where am I at now? You know, did it work and did it help? This is your first time tuning into my channel. Be sure to check out my other videos about pelvic floor dysfunction. I go into depth about how I got diagnosed, what were my causes, and it'll make a lot more sense than just watching this and going, what the heck is she talking about? So I'll post the link somewhere, either in this little box here or in the caption below. The first time a vestibulectomy was suggested to me was in 2012. It was several months after the birth of my youngest son, and I was in physical therapy again, this time more as a preventative measure, just to make sure my pelvic floor stayed healthy and didn't go back to those old holding patterns. It was my physical therapist who mentioned it to me because as much as we were working to break down the scar tissue that formed from the episiotomy in my first pregnancy, she explained that no matter what we did, essentially it was gonna be there for the rest of time. Uh, we had made a lot of progress, but you know, scar tissue can't completely be taken away unless it's surgically removed. My doctor also agreed with the physical therapist, not just about the scar tissue, but the tissue within the vestibule was damaged as well. And she explained pretty much the same thing my physical therapist said. No matter how many topical creams we use, no matter how many trigger points I got, the nerves were essentially damaged permanently. There was only so much we could do to reverse it without surgical intervention. As I mentioned, this was only several months after giving birth to my youngest son. So one thing my doctor made very clear with me is she would not perform the surgery unless I knew for sure that I was done having children. She said, you know, there's really no point in going through this reconstructive surgery if I'm gonna have another vaginal delivery. When she brought that to my attention, I realized I wasn't quite ready. I was pretty sure my husband and I weren't gonna have any more children, but I couldn't answer it definitively. I also was curious to know if there was anything else I could do within my own power to get better. I'm a firm believer of finding a balance between natural approaches and medical interventions. And I think that really comes into play because of my background as a pharmacy technician and as a yoga teacher. And at that time in 2012, I still felt like there were some things I could explore and try within my yoga practice and within my physical exercise to try and improve the overall feeling within my body. And to be really honest with you, by this point, it had been five years of treatment and I was just kind of done. I wanted a break from the constant reminder of, of this discomfort and pain. I wanted to just be a wife, be a mother, enjoy my life, and kind of put all this stuff on the back burner. So at that time, I just wasn't ready, but I knew I was gonna reapproach the idea in time. So fast forward to 2016, four years passed. By this time, I had been so diligent with physical therapy, medication, dilators, physical activity. I had become very passionate about my yoga practice. I had done some strength training. I really made a lot of progress. But as I was told back in 2012, no matter what, there still was a level of discomfort, particularly during intercourse. And I just reached a point where I wanted to enjoy sex. I wanted it to be pleasurable for me, not just my husband. And he had been incredibly supportive throughout this, but I could tell I was reaching a point where 
a bit of resentment was building, you know, it was so easy for him to enjoy it. And for me, it was such work and I, and I wanted to feel good, to be honest. And I think that's important to keep in mind. If this is a procedure you're going to consider, make sure it's for yourself above all. I know how hard it is when you're in a relationship and you feel the burden or pressure of not pleasing your partner, but it shouldn't be your only motive. There should be a desire to be pain-free, to be able to experience pleasure in whatever capacity you can. This is also the time that I began seeing a therapist and she specializes in sex therapy, marriage therapy, as well as having experience working with uh, patients that experience vulvodynia or sexual dysfunction. So I really hit the jackpot with her. And I think these two things combined, really starting to reconnect with myself, repair my relationship with my husband and my own body and sexuality, really helped me feel more comfortable about approaching this procedure. Since so much time had passed, I had to revisit my doctor. She said the same thing she did four years prior. She thought I was an excellent candidate. It would take about four to six weeks for recovery. She also thought that I would feel big results. And they were going to remove the scar tissue at the perineum and remove a portion of the vestibule where the nerve damage was. And that included the glands that are within the vestibule. So that is the Bartholin's and Skeen's glands. And my doctor explained those glands are primarily responsible for lubricating the vaginal walls. And that kind of made me nervous at first, uh, and I didn't want her to remove them. But my doctor explained to me, she kind of chuckled. She's like, look, Nazareth, this is why lubrication is made. Do you want to, you know, either use a substitute for lubrication or continue to have pain? It's kind of a no brainer. <laughs> The next step was making sure my insurance covered it and I am blessed and fortunate to say that they did cover the procedure. I don't wanna get into specifics as far as cost because there are so many variables, uh, you know, for starters, who's performing the surgery, what country you live in, what insurance you have, if you have a deductible, uh, if you're in that network, out of network, all those things are gonna affect the overall cost. It wasn't easy, but it was something my husband and I really, really thought about and discussed, and he was really supportive. I gotta say, my husband was like, look, this is your body. If you feel like this is gonna be helpful, I'm with you 100% and we'll make it work. The week leading up to the surgery, I remember having a lot of self-doubt. I was wondering if my pain was really that bad. Was I just, you know, making this up? Was it necessary to go through the surgery? And I think when you experience chronic pain, those are things that can happen from time to time. You just really start to question your judgment. I also remember desperately searching on Google for anything I could find about a vestibulectomy. I read a lot of medical articles and even watched some videos, which, uh, don't do that. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Uh, I just remember wanting so bad to talk to a woman who had it done and, and to be able to say, well, what was it like for you? How did it feel? Does it look normal? You know, all of those questions. I'm going to do my very best to give my personal account of what it was like. So because this video has gotten a little lengthy already, I'm going to make a part two and talk all about the procedure and where I'm at now. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to watch all of the other videos leading up to having this surgery. The link will be somewhere and uh, subscribe, like, follow, all that jazz. Can't wait to see you next time.